99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And that's just real. At the center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as food and eating, it, it's not about your, your body as much as it is about your mind. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best every day. We are choosing shit that's not in our own best interest, right? So if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down, so you're going to kick yourself in the balls? So you're going to stop yourself from getting what you dream. Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. It's like you say to yourself, hey man, look, I know you want to eat that pizza and it'll be really good, you know, but I can't let you eat that, man, because if, if you eat that pizza, you're going to feel like shit. You know, and I, I just, I love you too much to let you eat that. And I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. Every morning when I when I get out of the bed, you know, I the, I haven't fixed everything in the world yet, so there's always something to do. I'm really driven by continually trying to um, elevate my elevate my mind and elevate my spirit and care for my body and um, to be able to love as many people as effectively as as possible with this mystery of life that I've been given. I went, uh, I went skydiving in Dubai, right? And skydiving, skydiving is a really interesting confront with fear. So then that night you're laying in your bed and you're terrified. You keep imagining over and over again, jumping out of an airplane and you can't figure out why you would do that. And you're laying there and you have the worst night's sleep of your life. You wake up the next day and you go, you know, down and you say where you were going to meet and everybody's there. So you get in the van and you don't know that your friends had the same night that you had. So you get there and then and what you do is your first jump, you're attached to a guy who is going, you know, he's going to walk you out. So you go and you get there and there's an airplane and nobody's stopping. Everybody's still going. So you fly and you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up to 14,000 feet and you notice there's a, a, a light. It's red and it's yellow and green, right? So right now the light's red. So then you start thinking at some point the light's going to go green because you don't know what's going to happen. And you wait and it goes yellow and the light goes green and somebody opens the door. And in that moment, you realize you've never been in a freaking airplane with the door open. Terror, 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 right? And then people start going out of the airplane and you go and the guy walks you up to the end of the thing and you're standing and your toes are on the edge and you're looking out down to death and they say one two and he pushes you on two because people grab on three and you fall out of the airplane and in one second you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life you're flying right it doesn't feel like falling right it's like the, you actually are kind of held a little bit by the wind and then you start and you you start falling you falling and you there's zero fear. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. It's bliss. And the, the lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? 
just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything up to the stepping out, there's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. On the other side of your maximum fear are all of the best things in life. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends and Saturday night you want to go out, but if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just, I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior. You can make a person smile, you can make a person feel good, you can make a person laugh, but whether or not a person is happy is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. Greatness is not this wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, God-like feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. This, uh, this one year, my father had him shot, and he decided for whatever reason that he wanted a new wall on the front of his shop. And we were mixing the concrete by hand. We were building this wall for a year and a half. Every day after school, we were coming, mixing concrete, putting it in the hole, doing it. And it was just myself and my little brother. And I remember standing back, looking at that wall, saying, there's going to be a hole here forever. A year and a half later, we laid the, the final brick. And my father stood back with my brother and I. We stood back, we looked at the wall, and he looked at me and my brother and said, yeah, don't y'all never tell me that you can't do something. And walked into the shop. We, did, we didn't grow up uh, with the sense that where we were was where we were going to be where we were almost didn't matter.